Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. What did you make this week of everybody getting more cap space because the NFL came out and announced the revenues were higher than expected? The Rams now have like $43 million, $42 million in cap space. Oh, it doesn't feel like that long ago that the NFL salary cap was like $150 million, does it? I mean, this thing is this thing has gone up at rapid speed. $255 million is a lot of money. And if you think about it, it's actually easier to set yourself up for the next several years because what's 255 in five years? 340. I mean, it's going to go up substantially. So signing some of these contracts, I do think we need to look at them a little bit differently, right? When you extend the guy, the way they can manipulate the money on the salary cap to, to add up to $255 million, you need a lot of cap hits at 20, 30, $40 million. So it definitely makes it a lot more easy. Now, here's the problem. Salary cap space in baseball. If Shohei Otani and Aaron, and even the, they don't have a salary cap, but you know what I mean? If a baseball player is hitting free agency, Shohei Otani is hitting free agency. If Kevin Durant's a free agent, he's hitting free agency. Well, you just, T. Higgins, franchised. You're going to see that list of like the top 10 free agents. Franchise, 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 franchise. That's what makes football a little unique is having a lot of cap space in, in this sport. Most of the best quote-unquote free agents never hit the open market. And then to get that next tier, the B player, I think you pay like a 25, 30% premium. Look yeah. at last year, the best tackle on the market, McGlinchey. You had to give him almost $60 million guaranteed. The 49ers, his third contract, Hargrave, he gets $80 million, $40 million guaranteed. So you pay an ultimate, it's like, you know, beachfront real estate because not that many guys hit it. So if it's a starter, a good starter, a guy that you know is a plug-and-play starter, you pay for it, right? And even some of these guys that are franchise, maybe they're quote-unquote available through a trade. It's like, oh, you know, we, we'd be open to trading T. Higgins, but we need your one in the 20s, and then you have to pay him $23 million a year. So it's if you want to dabble in that market, it's very, very expensive. It's why, to me, the Washingtons of the world, I would just take a deep breath, kind of let things play yeah. out. The Texans are a better example. Okay, you already see you got some stuff. If I got to overpay a guard and overpay a linebacker that I really like, who cares? Okay, yeah. I got $70 million. If I, if I invest 35 in those two guys, I feel pretty good about it. But I already know what I got. Like with Washington and some of these teams, let's just try to walk before we run. Let's just see how the quarterback is. Because, yeah, Drake May or Jaden Daniels, whoever they end up taking, I mean, how often do we see these guys be overwhelmed or whatever? Then all of a sudden you got to kind of – you you want flexibility as much as possible. To me, the Texans are a good example. Like I'd be pretty aggressive here. Like can I go get a T. Higgins? Could I make a trade, right, and then pay a guy? Like I, I'd be open to a lot of different options. Get in on the action with the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. How cool of a deal is that? All you have to do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. It takes 90 seconds and use the code Colin. C-O-L-I-N. This is the best deal you're going to find. New customers, it's a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. How cool is that? Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, code is Colin. The crown is yours. You know, it, one of the things, you're going to the Combine, one of the things that's great about the draft is it really has, you know, the NBA draft is fun, but there's two rounds, and these guys come in at 19. And they go to bad teams. So, and the hit rate's pretty low because you don't have as much video. It's hard in the NBA. Yeah. NFL, college draft, you have minimum three years of film. A lot of these guys come from two or three major conferences. They're playing against NFL guys. So there's misses, but there's a lot of hits as well. You know, now I, I, I was thinking about um, one of the things in the draft that I was reading a story and I forget... God, I want to give credit to whoever did it. They went back and looked at last year's draft and graded it. And again, it's not so. Houston had the most successful draft. So when C.J. Stroud comes in and crushes, some of it is very explainable. They hit like on five draft picks. Uh, number two, I, I know the Rams and the Seahawks were up there. The Packers were at three. And I got to tell you something. 
I, I, I said this, I liked both the Packers last two drafts is I sometimes wonder about this, but, but by the way, the, the, the jets and the giants terrible Yeah, <laughs> is that I sometimes wonder, and you worked in the building because Philadelphia where you worked, it's a wealthy franchise. There's a lot of money yeah. here. Green Bay. I could argue over the last 25 years has done a better job than anybody in this league drafting and developing. And when you were in the league, and my take is, is a lack of an owner helpful? The guys running it are just all football guys. But the Packers, they went to last year's draft and the receivers hit and and the tight ends hit. And the and I, I just, when I look at Green Bay, I think, okay, they've had different GMs, different coaches. They nail quarterbacks, great O-line. Uh, they always, always find receivers and tight ends. When you were in the league, um, is it one of those classic, the millionaire next door, that if you're on a school teacher salary, you're just not going to waste as much money. You're going to be smarter than a stockbroker who's got money to, right? Are the Packers seen as frugal because they don't have the game day revenue? But when I saw that list, and again, I apologize for not um, crediting who it was. I, I saw it on the plane. It was best draft from last year. Packers were third. And I thought, God, when is the last bad draft the Packers had? I think a lot has to do with, you know, a lot of cultures when I get rid of everyone, right? A uh, GM and a, and a coach, the owner gets to hire everybody and he's always the boss. He's always hovering over everybody. It goes back to Ron Wolf and Holmgren. Ron taught all these guys, right? From Ted Thompson, Gudikins had worked there forever. So they've had the same culture in terms of management since Ron Wolf showed up in the early nineties. So the way they look at players, they've always been obsessed with height, weight, speed. I don't think it has to do as much with like pinching pennies and not being able to like, you know, you're the Rays, they're the Yankees, so you have to outthink them. I just think that they've taught and streamlined it from generation to generation very, very well. They have a like a company culture there that I think has transcended general managers from Ron Wolf to Ted Thompson to now Gudikins. And I think they've been pretty consistent back to what you're saying with the draft of like, they all know what they're looking for. Cause they've been looking for the same thing now for 30 years helps a lot when you have a quarterback, right? They, they, they have a quarterback and they know how to surround the guy and they've always done an incredible job of surrounding the guy on offense. I think the Ravens are a pretty good example of how they transitioned from Ozzie to DaCosta because DaCosta was his right-hand man forever. Yes. Right. So it's like, good point. when you have the cohesion, like why are the chiefs so strong right now? Cause Andy has spags. Who's never leaving. I mean, and who has been goes back for 20 years beating Belichick and Brady. It's very unique to have that. Kyle or McVay get a good coordinator. Boom, the guy's gone. They, they can't hold on to their defensive coordinator. So I, I, I think having the cohesion, the Packers is a great place to work. I remember when we were there, when I worked in the league, everyone was always kind of envious of like, because it was like this chill vibe, but they were winning big. And it was just, you're the Green Bay Packers. There was like the pressure we had in Philadelphia. You felt it every day when you went in the building. Sure. They definitely don't have that. Yeah, I think the Chiefs really have that going on right now. But a lot has to do with winning. I, I just think it's a, it's a very unique organization. But I, th I do think it gets back to the, the streamlined vision from generation to generation. And they've all crossed. You know, like John Schneider hires Mike McDonald. They, they don't know each other. They're hoping this chemistry works because he's a good coach with the Ravens and the you know, he knows, but it's like, you're kind of keeping your fingers crossed. You, you look at Harbaugh, goes to the Chargers. Who do they hire as a general manager? A guy he knows, a guy he's comfortable with from Baltimore. So you're like, yeah, it's probably going to work out. He knows John there. It's all in the family. That matters. Like Shanahan's had a lot of success with people he knows. He's worked with Robert Sala. He coached D'Amico Ryans. Brian Greasy, he worked with when he was young at Tampa. His dad knows him. We're all comfortable with people we know, Right. right. <laughs> Who do you hire the volume like to run your management people that you're comfortable with, people with, you know, it helps now they have to be talented, but like when you're all on the same page, it's a lot easier to operate. And I think for 30 plus years, the Packers have just had a lot of cohesion. Not a lot of people leave their coaches do, you know, but they're, they're scouts. I, I don't know if they pay top notch relative to the NFL executives, but I, I, I sure know when they're winning things are having success. People like working there. Yeah, you can also buy a hell of a house in Milwaukee. Yeah, live like a king. $490,000. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. it's just, it was when I saw the list, uh, 
it was like, God, Green Bay knows what they're doing. And to your point, quarterbacks kind of make it all work. You can, I mean, listen, Brett Veach at Kansas City's had some misses. You forget Sky Moore, you forget him really quickly. Mahomes makes you forget shit really quickly. Well, it's like someone told me with the Jets a couple years ago. They're like, they had all those picks in the top, whatever, the first couple rounds for two straight years. We could we could go seven of eight. They all could be pro bowlers. If Zach's a whiff, we're in trouble. We'd go one of eight. If Zach's a hit, contract extensions. Well, what happened? They went seven, eight, maybe not seven, eight, but five or six of eight, and Zach's a problem, and they got issues. That quarterback, I mean, if Jordan Love, and we're all going to pencil him in, I, I do think there's a difference of kind of, they got to fly under the radar a little bit this year. They started slow. Then they came on. Everyone next year is going to be looking at them like double-digit wins, playoff team. It is a different pressure. That's why I give a lot of credit to the Lions. Everyone took the Lions seriously this year coming in, and they handled yep. it well. Like, it's it's a it's another – now, LaFleur has success now. He's been a part of those type teams with Aaron, so he's – I feel comfortable with it, but sustaining high-level play year in, year out, that's hard. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of tangible pressure on Jordan Love next year. 